everyone, I'm Juliana. And um, imagine you're a farmer. Imagine you're a farmer on a 10,000 hectare farm, which is about the size of 18,000 football fields. And you're just one of the 100 workers working there, but you're a farm director. So how do you decide on which area you cultivate? The state tells you. How do you decide which crops to grow? The state tells you. How do you decide where to buy your inputs or to sell your output and to which prices? The state tells you. Now, 1991 comes and the system of plant economy that has existed for about seven decades collapses. And now all your land is divided into shares of about 10 hectares each. So you get one of those and you can decide whether you try to get more and get a, a bigger farm again or you try to cultivate it on yourself. And you also try to organize all these relations I don't know if you can see very well, but as a grain farm director, you have to organize relationships with landowners, labor, input suppliers, credit organizations, your marketing partners, insurance, and so on. So basically what we see is that um, we have a change from this system, where uh, orange st stands for state, to, to that system where um, blue stands for private actors. And this is exactly where my um, PhD steps in. So I want to look at the current system and how this transformation happened and how now the rules of the game are, also the sanctions and um, incentives in the system. And all together I call agrarian institutions. So according to which rules, sanctions and incentives do, do these uh, relationships work now? Um, I focus particularly on the Tumen region in West Siberia. It has been very little researched. And uh, well, I apply qualitative research methods, so I go and talk to the people on the ground. And uh, this is still work in progress, but what I find so far is that the state actually still intervenes into land management. And the question is, how can it do so in the market economy? Well, in, in Russia, in, in, in that particular region, it, it is very rich in oil and gas, so it can provide um, subsidies to farmers from the regional budget. And in fact, agriculture will be unprofitable without subsidies in that area. So basically they play a role of incentives and sanctions in the system. So for example, um, the uh, actual eligibility requirement for subsidies is that farmers are not allowed to reduce the size of the land that they cultivate. So if they had 10,000 hectares last year, they're not allowed to have 9,500 9, hectares this year. This is an official requirement, but there are also um, semi-official ways of how the state the district authorities uh, dictate to farms which crops they should grow. And here it's about um, state political goals of which crops they want to have. And especially now with this uh, sanctions against Russia, it becomes a very, very political issue. But I also find that uh, there are ways of w in which farms perceive that they can be stripped of subsidies if they do not follow what the authorities say, even though this is not the case. So basically, uh, they see that they have their perceived effects of subsidies, which are not there. And as a second step, I try to see what state influence means for human environment interactions. As uh, you might have heard, the Soviet state used to do things like diverting rivers or um, cultivating crops, crops in areas where um, they're not suitable at all for. So um, I want to see what the case is now, and I actually find that state still structures human environment interactions in a particular way and they ignore the biophysical conditions of agricultural production. And um, more conclusions are yet to come. Thank you. Wow, okay, so any questions from the floor? Very quick, yeah. so the orange one would be the Soviet period, right? Right, um, this is about 1980s and that is about now, and in between I have the different configurations of the circle. And so labor was privately managed? Uh, no, actually, yeah, it's a bit, I didn't have time to explain that. Um, by this I mean that the actors are state, and these are the relationships. So basically the relationship between the farm and the labor was state managed. Labor was private or private persons, but the way they were waged or the way they had to work, it was all decided by the state. It was not decided by the farm itself. That's what I mean. And in there we have a switch to, well, some actors, they're mixed now, like advisory and landowners, but um, the relationship is still managed by the state. Okay. That's what I mean. Okay. Yeah. There was one short question and answer. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Juliana. Thank you.